So I'm trying something new with uh, with my camera phone. I'm not using TikTok to make this. Because um, TikTok, even though I am allowed to talk for 10 minutes, won't let me film that long. Um, and I didn't want to make a bunch of little small segments that people would get lost in trying to figure out. Uh, I originally, I'm talking on the Protect Every Child TikTok channel um, as the admin there, but this is still my personal channel, and so I'm going to talk about my personal impressions of the first two days of Protect Every Child Week. Um, honestly, I guess I'm surprised uh, as I talk to people in the public that more people don't know that I'm the admin for Protect Every Child. I I've seen as I've worked um, since May of 2020, so it's been over two years now, a lot of people when they send messages or they talk and say, thank you, Sam, and get a response. It's me usually 80, 90% of the time doing everything behind the scenes. And so I'm always surprised that people don't know who I am. <laughs> um, the other moderator does a lot of work too, but um, the fact that people don't know that there's two of us doing all the stuff behind the scenes that Sam's not doing this, it's us. It still surprises me. Um, and, and, you know, for this whole turnout, because, you know, people can make reservations on the Protect Every Child Week event page on Facebook, because we didn't get a lot of, like, high numbers of, like, you know, high, like, thousands of people, I didn't, we didn't really know if anybody would come. And so Monday was quite a, quite a pleasant surprise. I mean, it was actually pretty beautiful, pretty overwhelming that um, the Jones family flew out from California just for Protect Every Child Week. I mean... That's what Brian and I both have done. And and, and what they did <laughs> was so beautiful and, and so well-spoken. It just was wonderful. And then on top of that, to have um, the Chewed Gum film crew with Elena show up, they didn't know we were there. It was just the serendipitous that, that they came. And wow. I mean, that was wonderful. <clears throat> I'm sorry I can't edit out this coughing, but it will stop my tape. Um... And today, uh, it was a hard day. I had a hard time sleeping last night. Sometimes with my Hashimoto's, um, I have problems at night. Um, and between that and the hypervigilance I have as a remnant of my childhood abuse and the Hashimoto's making my brain race, sometimes it's hard to sleep. And so I, I didn't sleep too great last night and then woke up this morning and watched a documentary that I just, I identified with so much that I bawled through a lot of it. Um, so it was kind of a downer mood and I had to call my husband, um, and hear his voice to head off and do this thing. And so, uh, it might not mean anything to anybody else, but when we were heading out to the car this morning, uh, Curtis, Brian, and I, um, I saw on the flower bed, a seed pod. Why would that matter? Right? Well, back in my home stake of Kalamazoo, um, I was really involved in primary, and I had two dear friends in that primary stake presidency, Annette and Sandy. And uh, one year they did the Rainbow Chain of Faith activity. Uh, we had this big, long chain of, of little miracles that the children looked for every day, the evidences of God, of Christ in their lives. And the following year uh, was the Tree of Forever, and Annette picked out this specific tree with this beautiful a star seed pod. Um, and there, there was this star seed pod in the flower bed. This is not a tree native to Michigan um, or to Montana. And so to see that there in the flower bed was just, it felt to me like a sign from the universe, like a rainbow sign, really, and, and to keep going. Um, I was here doing what I'm supposed to be doing right now. Um, was I surprised that nobody came for LGBTQ uh, day? No. Disappointed, but not surprised. I mean, that's quite a location to talk about this subject, and, and I know that it's still really badly treated in the Mormon community. Um, what I did like was the whole thing uh, with City Creek Mall. Um, you know, this is my first trip to Utah as a, as a officially an ex-Mormon. Not you know when I was excommunicated, I never considered myself to be outside of the church, except technically yes, but in my mind, I was still Mormon. I was just a kicked out, shunned, forsaken, hated Mormon. So this time coming back, 
actually mentally not feeling like a part of this anymore. Uh, it's been kind of upsetting, like, finding out that President Nelson uh, has an entire building to himself to live in, not just, like, the top floor. To me, that's disturbing. Um, and then when I went to City Creek Mall, you know, there's a lot of homeless people, and, and apparently they've been driving them out of Temple Square, driving them out of the downtown, trying to get them farther and farther south, farther and farther away from the public eye, um, so we can have our beautiful Potemkin village where nobody sees the problems. I mean, I saw this in Berlin. I, I was there in 1990 uh, in East Berlin, and there was like these beautiful facades that faced the west, but once you got past the initial streets, even then, you know, I, I visited in the summer of 90, there were rats in the streets, there was filth, but that was all hidden, well hidden from western eyes. And so, you know, it's, I'm a little reminded of this, you know, signs up saying, don't, don't feed the panhandlers, don't help them. Um, benches right outside the, the church administration building where it's set up so that the homeless can't sleep there. I can tell you what, that marble is hell to sit on too. But City Creek Mall was another dimension of shit. Uh, somehow they have the sidewalks marked as this is where the city property is and this is where private property is. The building is marked private property. So how the fuck does the public get to go into private property? It's either public or private. But anyway, because it's private property, they have the right to be assholes there. So uh, there's a security guards all over the place so that no homeless people come in there. If you look suspicious, they drive you out. And this mall is swank. This mall is a show-off of aren't we wonderful. I mean, all the swankiest, ritziest places. And you'd think with a mall like that, that the bathrooms would practically have chandeliers in them, right? But no. The entire first floor has zero bathrooms at all. The second floor has a bathroom, all right. And, and with the size of this mall, you'd think, you know, maybe it would be like uh, bathrooms like inside of an airport with many stalls. No. No, they have one bathroom on the second floor. One with one toilet. Very much like the uh, family bathrooms that some LDS buildings have. Even with the uh, same equipment supplier for the uh, baby diaper changing table. Same one you see in the LDS Wars buildings. <laughs> it, it was just... Unbelievable. Second floor, one bathroom. Or no, third floor, one bathroom. And the fourth floor had two. And that's enough bathrooms for all the people coming there to drop their dough. And all of this is to make sure a homeless person doesn't have a place to sit down and take a crap. Because let me tell you, I have noticed in this town, it reminds me very much of New Orleans when I was there. New Orleans, uh, when I was there with my ex-husband, smelled like piss. Smelled like a public urinal everywhere. And in this town, I don't remember it from my other visits, but there's a distinct smell of sewage, especially when you're walking over a street gutter. You smell sewage. So, I don't know. The, the, the stark difference between the mind-blowing affluence and the homeless people right in the midst of them is mind-blowing. Uh, while we were all waiting to use the bathroom, I met some tourists from uh, Denmark, the Netherlands. I can't remember. It's like almost midnight, but that was a fun conversation. I uh, haven't had a chance to speak German with anybody uh, because of where I live. And so we spoke German for a while and then switched over to English. I know a lot of Europeans like to practice their English over here. Boy, did we have a fun time talking. It was it was lots of fun. I really enjoyed that, too. Um, and also today, I had my first moment of meeting somebody in real life that you know on TikTok. She was just walking past, and we recognized each other. It was great! But now I can't find her on my friends list. Um, she took a picture with her phone, and then they had to hurry uh, because her husband had a, an appointment. And, and I don't have a picture with her. So I hope she posts the video so that I can see what the picture looks like with her. Um, yeah, it's been it's been a ride. Uh, it's been a ride watching the windows <laughs> in the church administration building, uh, watching people's eyes when they pass by, watching people's reactions, because uh, I am a people watcher. I confess. Um, do I think the trip is worth it? Yes. 
Um, I know that uh, change has to come from the Mormons themselves, though. 